Brendan, Kevin's brother. Uh, first of all, I, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight, and uh, I would like to have a special thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Antonacci for putting on such a beautiful event. Tonight, there's so many things to be thankful for. The lifetime commitment of two people that I really love and admire. Uh, the coming together of two different but wonderful cultures into one family. But the thing that I'm going to be the most thankful for is that I know that after tonight, I'll never again get one of those phone calls from my mother. You know, a phone call that usually goes something like this. Brendan, I just wish you would find someone. You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm so worried about your brother. And I would usually try to, instead of like, you know, appeasing her, I would try to incite her a little bit more. I'd say, Mom, you know what? He's, he's out playing in one of his gigs. He'll meet someone. And she would follow with, yeah, enough with this gig crap, you know? He, he really needs to grow up. He needs to grow up. Well, my first congratulations is to my mother tonight. Mom, it looks like all well, your, uh, your prayer chains and lighting of candles have finally paid. <laughs> okay. We're so lucky to have you as part of our family. You bring so many terrific qualities to the table. And I personally want to thank you so much for making my brother so happy. Uh, I. You're going to find that I'm going to be your best reference point for Kevin. Uh, Kevin and I shared a room together for 20 years, and then we, uh, we shared a house together for another four or five. So anything you're going to want to know about him, you probably want to come see me. <laughs> and, uh, actually, as I was thinking about what to say tonight, I was thinking about all the things that I learned from Kevin, and I thought I'd share some of them with you tonight. The first thing I learned was how to overcome adversity. And I'm not just talking about, you know, Kevin was sick when he was young and, and he got through that fine, but I'm talking about, you know, some of the cruel jokes God can play on someone physically. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, you might not realize this, but Kevin's been the same size since he's been 12 years old. <laughs> at, at, uh, at age 12, he had a size 13 shoe. And, I mean, he was just like the most uncoordinated, unathletic kid going. You know, you hear him big feet sloshing down the hall in school. But, and then, you know, watching him attempt sports was just a real treat. It was, I mean, it was like, you know, passing one of those really bad car accidents on the, on the highway where you're, uh, you're afraid to look because you know it's gonna be bad, but you just have to anyway. And, and you're really, you really disappointed in, in that, in those. Um, and then, you know, if the, if the, the height and the, and the feet weren't bad enough, I mean, he had these teeth growing up. I mean, you name it, braces, retainers, rubber bands, everything. He had them all on his face. In fact, one of my most vivid memories growing up was my father receiving the bill from the orthodontist. And, and just, I remember so vividly screaming into the phone, Doctor, I, I work for the bank. I don't own the place. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of the other things I learned from Kevin, and Patty, you realize this too, is uh, it's perfectly acceptable to fall asleep anywhere at any time, you know? I know he's, he was always out playing, you know, late at night, but he, uh, he would always, you know, fall asleep sporting events, TV shows, movies, you name it. But the most unusual place that, he's, that I was with him where he fell asleep, we were out of bat exit 19 on the New York State Thruway, and I had just, I had just uh, fallen asleep. It was about 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And next thing I know, I'm on the passenger side, and I'm awoken by the sound of crunching metal on, on the side. And I, next thing I know, we're up on the, on the, the side of the, the, the mountains, I guess. And I look down at Kevin, there he is. He's just passed out. He's right. doing about 75 at the time, you know? It was, that one really caught me off guard as well. Uh, but uh, after... You know, one of the other things I, I've learned from Kevin, too, is uh, that uh, just because you're in your mid to late 20s, that doesn't mean you can't dress like you're in your mid to late 80s. <laughs> uh, Day, 
he always wears one article of clothing from that he found in my Uncle John Gates closet. And Uncle John's been dead for like 15 years, you know? But, uh, you know, there, there are some, there are some uh, you know, very good things that I learned from Kevin. You know, uh, I've learned how to, to try to be generous to, to other people to a fault, to, to always be there for your family when they need you. Uh, you know, to, to be strong in your belief and stand up for what you believe in. And to you know to say you're sorry when you when you know you've hurt someone, uh, to try to keep your extended family as close as you can possibly to you, and also to be proud of your heritage and never do anything to to embarrass that. Um, Kevin and Patty, today you start your a family of your own, and when you have children, my only hope for the two of you is that you love them as much as your parents have loved you. And. Uh, Growing up with Kevin, a lot of people know this, but if you don't, he's a tremendous Beatles fan. It's you know, obvious by his, his, uh, the song he selected tonight for, for the first dance. So being around it all the time, I, you know, I've kind of learned a few things from some, some of the Beatles songs that I thought were appropriate for tonight. So I wanted to, uh, to toast you with this. Um, Kevin and Patty, today is a very special day in the life. Kevin, before Patty came along, I'm sure there were points that you felt like a real nowhere man. How happy, how happy you must have been the day she said she loves you. It's obvious that your life is getting better all the time. Don't hide your love away, or when you're 64, you could end up like the fool on the hill. If you ever needed someone, don't be afraid to ask for a little help from your friends. And as far as I'm concerned, any time at all, all you have to do is call and I'll be there. Money, money may be what you want, but money can't buy you love. And finally, when life becomes a little too helter-skelter, let it be. Because I'm sure you'll find that as you travel your long and winding road of life together, that in the end, all you need is love. Oh.